Good morning, friends. Welcome to Kerala Says. Which of the following policy tools can be used by the government to achieve st stabilization of objective? So this is the question. So the answer is. So when we need to stabilize the economy, what we need to do the scenarios varying the tax rates. Yes. Suppose if there is a inflation, so if there is a excessive supply of money in the government in the economy, so what we need to do is we need to alter our structures. Either we need to increase the tax rates. Definitely during the inflation, people have more money with them. So if you increase the tax rates, the pay, the tax more taxes will be paid to the government, so that it helps in controlling the inflation. So that is there adjust adjusting the government spending. Okay. Suppose in the inflation, this is the scenario. During the recession, the government re need to reduce the tax rates because at that time people doesn't have so much of money with them. So depending on the economic scenarios, they need to alter to make the economy stabilize. They either need to increase the tax structure or decrease the tax structure. Similarly, with there are the government spending levels also. When the government during the recession, government need to spend more. Okay, so that the people gets the money. Whereas in the time of uh, recession also, they need to cut down the unnecessary expenditures. For instance, uh, arranging the public function in a grand manner, cutting down of various unnecessary expenditures that they have to carry out. Then engaging open market operation operations. The RBI does this to manage the economy by selling or by selling or purchase the government securities in the open market so that they will adjust the cash flow or money supply in the economy. All these are part of what we call it as the tools which can be used to make achieve the stabilization objective. Moving on the next next aspect net national product refers to gross refers to what it is they have given so comes gdp okay ndp so they have given what you mean by nnp national net national product nnp so gdp means income of the sum of all the economic activity within a country gdp is sum of all the economic activity within a country is called as gdp ndp means sum of all economic activity within a country minus the depreciation right gnp means sum of value of all the final goods sum of value sum of the value of all the final final value of all the goods and services produced within a country minus in income of indians from abroad then the income of foreigners from the india that should be directed then we'll arrive at the gnp figures so gnp is nothing but gdp plus net factor income what we call it as right net factor income majorly talks about the income of indians from abroad and the income of foreigners from india that is the gnp how we come up to the nnp gnp minus depreciation it is gnp minus depreciation gnp uh, the nnp talks about the g yeah uh, it talks about the gnp minus depreciation gross national product minus depreciation is the correct answer <coughs> then 52 consider the following statements about the gdp deflator it's a measure of general it's a measure of the general price inflation is yes, it is calculated by dividing the nominal gdp by the real gdp yes that is the right answer then inflation in India is measured by so inflation majorly is measured by the CPI based we use CPI as a base for the measuring the inflation not the wholesale price index then nominal GDP so what you understand by the nominal GDP nominal GDP is the GDP measured at the current market price it is not adjusted to the base value or base year so real GDP is the one which is ad measured at the constant prices constant prices means adjusted to the base value or the inflation so nominal gdp means it is measured at the current market prices so the answer is a 50th consider foreign statements about the liquidity trap so liquidity trap is a situation wherein wherein the expansion in monetary policy does not increase the interest rate it does not stimulate the economic growth okay so you need to understand the liquidity trap is a situation wherein the people lose faith in the economy so they try to not to invest their money into the uh, any banking uh, uh, financial options or any government securities they don't invest the people 
means they start losing hope in the economy so they try to hold the cash with them rather than depositing in the bank investing in some securities investing in some other firms they don't do this because they have lost hope in the economy that they will not yield any interest rate to them or profit to them so it is it rich liquidity trap is a situation wherein the government even though it does the expansionary policy means lowering the interest rates infusing the money into the economy it fails to revive the economy or it fails to revive the confidence of the people the even though government has given free loans means lesser interest rate loans the people may not go and buy those loans even though they buy the loans they will not invest it in the other scenarios they keep their low money with them rather than investing in the economy so that the economy can grow that type of situation we call it as the liquidity trap so it is a situation when expansionary monetary policy does not increase the interest rate on the any investments in which the people make it does not stimulate the economic growth yes both one and two are correct which of the following il uh, illustrates the correct order of uh, liquidity in the money supply so <coughs> the answer is given is the a uh, uh, m1 is greater than m2 m3 m4 so it is always you need to understand with to what you mean by m1 m2 m3 m4 it's a basic understanding of narrow money base money so if you understand what actually m1 m2 m3 m4 is about you can easily answer this question so moving on to the next aspect which of the following is the liability of the rbi they have given you so the liability of the rbi is the currency held by the public so liability and assets of the rbi when it comes to assets and the liability so in the liability scenario notes issued by the rbi notes in circulation notes held by the people or the liability of the rbi so rbi has to pay the or say that that money is issued by them and it's a liability of the rbi to give back the money or equal value of goods for that particular money that is the liability of the rbi then the assets includes the gold held by the rbi foreign exchanges means foreign reserves which the rbi holds so foreign currency assets what we call it as are the assets because it has invested in the other government securities for us government securities if the government has rbi has invested then it's a asset so any investment it has made in with regard to the investing in the government securities holding the government uh, bonds holding of gold okay the treasury bills all are comes under the assets of the rbi so liability is nothing but the currency issued by the rbi the currency held with the public the currency with the uh, circulation then the amounts deposited by other banks into the rbi are all comes under the liabilities so which of the following is the liability is the currency held by the public is the liability for the Uh, rbi so if there is a wrong in the answer you make sure that you correct this so i'm discussing the uh, what is uh, discussing the overall concept okay you make sure that if there is something wrong in the synopsis make sure that you correct